know, I feel like I'm being towed on a winch. I know, it's crazy, isn't uh, it? It's amazing. Boy, it, just, it really does climb anything. <laughs> it's hilarious. Jeez. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're talking about what appears to be the mid-40s Dodge Power Wagon. These were fantastic vehicles. They built them from about 46 to 1968. Uh, all kinds of torque, it's usually six-cylinder engines. They could pull anything, go anywhere. This one's got six wheels. This one's kind of an amalgamation of a couple of different trucks. Been a hot rod a little bit, but not in the traditional way, which is what I like. Uh, let's meet the man who built this. It's, it's Legacy is the name of the company, Winslow Bent. The best truck name ever, Winslow <laughs> Bent. That sounds like a truck guy. Hey, Jay, how are and you And you dress like a truck guy. <laughs> well, Those are truck clothes, and Winslow Bent is a great truck name. You know, we're from Wyoming, so yeah, we're, we're yeah. trying to represent yeah. good trucks and nice flannel shirts. So. Yeah, and, and Le <laughs> Legacy is the name of the company. Yes, Legacy Classic Trucks. Okay. And uh, what we're most known for is our Dodge Power Wagon restorations. Uh, we love power wagons, a lot of just, you know when you're driving down a country road and you see an old abandoned truck right. sitting in the field? I'm the guy that stops and tries to buy the thing. Right, right. And so we start with these abandoned just kind of derelicts and we bring them back to our shop and give them a new life. Yeah, and these were built at a time when weight, they didn't care. They wanted the heaviest, strongest. Like exactly. now they measure the tensile strength and we know it can take exactly this, or it can take exactly that. But like the old Duesenbergs over there, the chassis were just so overbuilt because they never knew what they were going to deal with. That's exactly right. Yeah. The earlier versions, before they called them power wagon, these were in World War II. Right. The guys get back from World War II and say you're into ranching, you're into forestry, you're into mining, anything like that. Right. If you had a tough nasty job that had to get done, Right. they said, look, give us some of those trucks we had over there. So right. Chrysler relabeled these things, the Power Wagon, and they sold like hotcakes. In fact, they sold so many of these things, really not that many are left today because these things were just worked into the ground. Yeah, yeah. But the nice thing is, these chassis, even if they rust out, they can't really rust out because exactly. they're, they're so thick, they're so heavy. And this is not something you make the Beverly Hills school run like the Land Rover, you know, no. where you pull into the mall and, you know, Buffy goes and gets her sneakers or whatever. I mean, it's a real truck truck. It is. It is. You keep it in the barn, you take it out, you want to go elk hunting or fishing right. or something like that. This is a great way to get around. And the thing I love is, there's this tendency now to put a Chevy V8 in everything. You right. Know, LS7, LS whatever. And those are wonderful motors. But right. you've gone a different way, and we'll get to that in a little bit. That's why I was kind of thrilled that you went this direction. We'll, we'll talk about that. Well, <laughs> here's a little hint. It says turbo diesel. And exactly. You, it, and Cummings, of course, makes a fantastic engine. So you put a, a Cummings what? Four, six, what? It's a, called a 4BT. It's a 3.9 liter Cummins, so it's a four-cylinder. Okay. And it's kind of the baby version of what you see in the heavier commercial trucks today. But four liter. Just yes. About. Yeah. So it's you almost, got a good sized piston. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's and it's it's all stroke. This is right. all torque. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're making maybe 120 horsepower. Right. But your torque, 1,200 RPM. I'm making more torque than any small block yeah, Chevy yeah. ever built. <laughs> and you're probably what 3,000 RPM is the end of the world. Ah, uh, yeah. You're screaming yeah. at 3,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've got a five-speed gearbox. That's right. Yeah, we went with a five-speed, uh, fully synchronized, mm -hmm. which is a nice upgrade from how they were originally. And what were they? Were they three-speed with overdrive, four-speed? What were four they? Four-speed. Four-speed. So okay. you had super granny, kind of granny, right. pretty much granny, and then fourth gear was let's go to town. Fourth, fifth gear, let's hit 40 <laughs> miles an hour. Exactly. Because top speed of this truck back in the day was probably about 40, 45. That's right? about. That's about yeah, right. Yeah. There, but that, that's going up a hill like this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can be pulling a barn behind you and you'll be doing just fine. Now, this is six wheels, but it seems like a short bed for six wheels. That's exactly right. It, this is a mixture of parts and pieces. When right. you were talking about the chassis, this started off life as a 1942 Dodge, and it was called a WC63. It was a six wheel drive, open cab, oh, okay. troop transport. Oh. This vehicle was deployed in the European theater in World War II. At the end of the war, one way or another, it ended up in Norway, came back to the United States, was with the U.S. Air Force, then was decommissioned from the U.S. Air Force. 
by the time I found it, all that was left was the chassis. But right. I recognized what the chassis was, right. and I knew what I wanted to do, which was build a six by six civilian capped power wagon. Now, did you shorten the wheelbase, or is that the stock wheelbase? The it's the stock wheelbase, but the frame used to stick way out the back. Oh, okay. So, oh, so you, you've cut it here. We've, we've bobbed the frame. Okay. And then we hand built a bed that looked very, you know, we wanted to look like an original civilian power wagon bed, but we had to make these openings for the tandem axles. And right. then we had to hand build the fenders. You can imagine when you get going 35, 40 miles an hour in a vehicle like this, there is a lot going on. Well, is this six wheel drive now? It is a true six by six. Wow, okay. So maybe we'll put it up in the air later and we'll show people underneath. Oh, that would be like. great. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. About, uh, this is about an 8,000 pound vehicle. Okay. So it needs all it's that 8, torque. 8,000 pounds. About 8,000 pounds. You know, I was just thinking, well, you know, there's no door guard, the beams, there's no airbags. I was right. thinking, because a lot of times old cars look heavy. And then you realize, oh, they're only 3,700 pounds or something because it's all thin sheet steel. But wow, 8,000 pounds. When you pounds. look at the drum brakes and you look at how the frame's made, I mean, the frame looks like it's a, a bridge. I mean, right. it's just so overbuilt right. that this thing is heavy. Right. So right. There's, uh, there's no question that you're driving a pretty substantial piece of machinery when you're bombing down the road. You get road hugging weight. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Road hugging weight. That's and the, the traction's unbelievable when you're <laughs> off road. The rear axles start bobbling up yeah. and down and they walk a little bit. And uh, it's just the sense of power and torque is phenomenal. So, can you go down the road at 65 or 70? Not in this one. No. I like. I like 55, right, 60. Okay. Um, you can push it harder if you wanted to overtake someone. But right. again, all those drive lines and gearboxes and everything else. There's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of stuff happening. That's right. exactly right. Well, let's open the hood. Let's show people the. Yeah, the that would be great. So we got the old butterfly hood here. Okay. Opens on both sides so you can right. see everything. Okay. You get this up. A little prop rod. Okay. So. This is the 3.9 liter Cummins. What am I looking at here? Is this, uh, oh, that's, oh, I, see, I thought that was a spring there. I guess it is a spring. That's, that's the injection pump. Right. It's all mechanical. Gotcha. So this is a true one wire diesel. The right. one wire that goes to this motor is to shut it off. Okay. So the idea is if you get this thing running, it's going to stay running. Right. And when I was thinking about power wagon and what power wagons are designed for, this seemed like a great engine to use. Okay. So we were able to bring in power steering. Okay. This here is your brake booster. You got dual master, right? Dual master, right. which I insist on on, on yeah. any vehicle that I'm going to get away from original at all. Okay, this is your brake fluid. What, what do we got here? So this is a HydraBoost brake system. Okay. So the way that works is there's a pump on the side of the motor. Right. It goes to your power brakes. Right. It goes to your power steering. Right. And that's a reservoir. Oh, so, I see. Yeah, that holds your extra juice. But gotcha. it all runs in one big circuit. Oh, okay, very nice. Yeah. And of course, it just runs on diesel fuel, obviously. Yeah. 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 And uh, not a big fan of cold starting, you know, down to about 20 degrees or so. And then, yeah. I, then you want to have it plugged in, just right. like. So you got a block heater. Exactly. Okay. Yep, yep. And uh, turbochargers over on the other side, non-intercooled. Again, we just wanted to keep it really now, simple. This was originally a six-cylinder. Right. Okay. Right. But obviously, this is a shorter cab because a six wouldn't fit in here, right? Exactly. Okay. So you have the the civilian model cab. Right. Okay. Your 1990 through current Dodge pickup trucks come with this great big, what's called a six BT Cummins, right. big six cylinder Cummins. Mm -hmm. Lop two cylinders off. And that's what you have here. Okay. And actually, all of the parts are interchangeable. So if this car needs to be serviced, you're not chasing down special parts. Everything that you see under the hood, you can basically get at Napa. Oh, okay. I mean, so it's really easy to service all your filters, fluids, everything. Well, I love the fact you kept it sort of Dodge with Cummings because they right. have that relationship already. So it makes it kind of they Kinda go cool. well together, yeah. and I just wanted to do something that was really utilitarian. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to lose that when we did the build. And this would normally have been open here, right? Correct. So. Yep, yep. The private would sit behind the wheel, and you'd have 16 guys riding behind you. 
and uh, bullets whizzing everywhere. You'd and, think uh, you'd have a closed cab to protect you. You would think. I mean, you would think. You're going into combat. Why would exactly. you have an open cab? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe if you needed to get out of there yeah. in a hurry. And I always like a split windshield. Something sexy about that. Makes Absolutely. It, sets it off, makes it look kind of cool. Yeah. These are massive. <laughs> ah! Ah! That's a fender. <laughs> yeah. A lot of steel. A lot of steel. Yeah. Have so you got air lights. conditioning in it? It does, yeah. Wow, there you go. So yeah. You know. Obviously, it didn't have that originally, right. but uh, we got some air conditioning. Originally, it had a big power takeoff winch. Right. And if you actually want to use your winch a lot, those are pretty scary. Yeah. And so we decided to go with a nice worn electric winch. And then we put some charging posts over here. So if you need to jumpstart your tractor okay. or you want to put it on a trickle charge for the season. What kind of an alternator do you have in there? That's just a GM two wire. Just, oh, very, just a regular nothing. Exactly. Okay. And all of our builds, you'll see again and again, I want to use really handy, easy right. to access stuff because it's my hope that my customers don't just, you know, keep it in storage, but they're actually taking it out and right. using it. And so if you're in Missoula, Montana and right. you need an alternator, it's going to be on the shelf. Yeah, and go so to Missoula I, Auto Parts. Of exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. And they've got one. They got one sitting there. Of course, this is a much bigger tire than we ever would have had back in 1942. The biggest difference that you can make in one of these vehicles, as far as making it drivable, is changing out the wheels and tires. Yeah. And on this build, we went with the Toyo tires. These are 37-inch Toyo. I mean, start with. Toyo tires. Oh, these are made in Don't America. Don't let any of those troops in 1942 <laughs> hear about that. These are made in America. Oh, okay. Uh, All so right. it's absolutely the way to okay, go. Okay, there you go. There yeah. you go. Okay. And actually, we like Toyo tires. We got them on a bunch of our. Well, I tell you, it is the roundest tire that you can buy. I mean, yeah. these trucks originally were just all over the road. And you swap in these wheels and tires, and this thing goes nuts straight yeah. down the road. And we couldn't be happier with the product. And let's take a look. I like you kept kept the classic oh, door yeah, handle. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So going inside, I knew I wanted to update some things, but right. I wanted to keep it looking correct. Right. And so our gauges, uh, we wanted those to look like uh, World War II bomber gauges. Oh, very nice. Is that a tilt-away wheel? Yep, it tilts. See, I, so. see to me, tilt-away wheels always kind of detract a little bit from a period interior. I, I say just lose a few pounds and lose I agree. the tilt-away wheel. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. This is a huge truck, but yeah. the cab's actually relatively small. Yeah, it is tiny. And, uh, you know, if that's a difference between getting in and out of your vehicle comfortably, yeah. go for it. And this, of course, would have had a bench seat back then. Absolutely. The no such thing yep. as buckets back then. Yep. But very nice. Let's, uh, let's take it next door. We'll put it up in the air. We'll see what the undercarriage looks like. And then we'll, can we take it for a spin? That sounds great. I'd love to. Good. Let's do it. Okay, we got the truck up on our sterile Coney lifts. These, these are cool, aren't they? It's unbelievable. These lifts are incredible. The way you can wheel them around and just, I mean, this is an 8,000 pound truck. Yeah. Effortless. Have these, have, you, have these reached Wyoming yet? I mean, you guys are doing this. Yeah, we're, you don't have to do that anymore. It's all electric now. It's all computer. All right, let, let, let's see what you were talking. Let's explain to people what you're talking about. Let's start at the engine. Here's the motor here. Yeah. Okay. Here's our drive shaft. That is the shortest drive shaft I've ever seen. Yep, that's what they would call a spud shaft. Right, okay. And that just connects the transmission to the transfer case. Now, is that a custom-built piece, or is it? Is it that is, it okay. is. I had to, I had to, they would have had one originally, but this side of it is all modern now. It's got the, the Spicer right. 1530 joint on it, and this is all original. And what do you got, about six universal joints? How many universal joints uh, you got? Oh, right? well, let's see. We got one, two, three, four. <laughs> About 12. Wow. About 12 does the okay. trick. All right, here we go. So here we come out of here, we go this transfer case. Exactly. Then we go over here, and it splits to go front here. Correct. And then rear here. And then another rear okay. as well. So see how this has dual rear outputs. One okay. goes to this offset differential here. The other one makes a shot right to here to a carrier bearing, Okay. and then to the back. And that's how we get this incredible up and down action. And what is this? The transmission brake? Yeah, that's okay. your that's your brake for the okay. whole for the whole uh, your, your parking brake right, essentially. The brake. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And, okay. uh, and how much horsepower is lost going through all this? Can you imagine? I mean, it must be like it's insane. Thirty percent. I mean, this truck is making probably about four hundred and fifty foot pounds of torque right now with the right. diesel engine, 
And I don't know where it's going. Yeah. So then you come back here. Okay, then we split here. Yep. And you got two rear ends here, and then you got more universals back here. Yes. You know, I'm surprised at how small the differentials are, actually. I, I expected some big, giant pumpkin, you know? Right, right. And, you know, a lot of what's happening, the torque reduction is happening at the differential. These are 583 gears, which is why it doesn't both, go. So you've got 583 both sets? Everywhere is 583, oh, 583. 583 gears. Wow. <laughs> so that's where your mountain climbing ability comes. Yeah. But it's pretty neat because that means that everything through the transmission, drive lines, all of that, there's really not that much torque present there. Right. It's once it hits the differential, that's your torque multipl multiplication. Right. So right. that's where all of the reduction happens. Okay. And they cause massive leaf springs there. Yeah. And the cool thing here is that the leaf springs, they're essentially like what you'd see on any other truck, but they're upside down. Right. So the axles are mounted oh, they to are the upside down, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the axles are mounted to the end. See where your yeah. leaf spring would normally be mounted to the frame. Yeah. It's mounted to the axle. In the center part, this is where it all bobbles back and forth. Gotcha. So this is a giant fulcrum right here. Now the English used to use gaiters. They leather things. You'd, you'd, you'd fill these grease and then you put these leather gaiters on you tie them off exactly. to keep the grease in, in Exactly. In, in and the there's still spring. a lot of that present. If you look at um, in, the, in the pinion seals yeah. and in the axle seals, they're super old school and right. the best way to make them work is you, you soak it in oil for 24 hours before you install it. Okay. Just to kind of get them all beefed Now, are up. these the original transfer cases from 1942? Are these modern? These are all original. Wow. Everything you see on here, this is all original stuff. I mean, what we've done is take pieces of a 42, pieces of 47, right. and try and get them all to jive together and build a truck that, you okay. know, Never existed, but it should have. Well, there should have been a six by six civilian, but there wasn't. And then we come up to front wheel. And you can't disengage front wheel, right? You can. Oh, you can. You so you can, can just have rear wheel. Yes, if you want. absolutely. But where's the fuel tank? And what happened to us on this build was we got this thing done. We're like, oh, this is great. Everything's working. Everything's moving around the way it's supposed to. We lopped off the back of the truck. Where are oh, we going to put the fuel tank? Yeah, the fuel tank. So we yeah. built a little stealth tank that goes in the bed well, of the that's truck. Still, that's hilarious. So you put it, <laughs> put it all together. Like the guy that goes to the restaurant and says, wait, try the soup. Why? Just try the soup. <laughs> Just try the soup. Why? Try the soup. All right, where's your spoon? Ah! <laughs> exactly. It's the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, same thing. And it was, as, a, as a, a builder, it was one of those like, oh, shoot, are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Uh, actually, not, oh, uh, shoot, but I get it, yeah. <laughs> oh, you get the whole truck done. All right, let's put gas in it. Hey, wait a minute. We, we don't have, Where's the gas well, how, how big is the tank? Is it it's about small? 25 gallons. Oh, oh that's a goal. Well, that's so huge. It's, it's plenty. Okay. It's plenty. And where is it hidden away now? In it's the... in the bed of the truck. You'll okay. see it. We, we color matched it to, oh, uh, I see. to so the rest it, of the truck. So it's like this. Mm -hmm. It's okay. in the very front of the bed. It's okay. easy to access. It's easy to get to. Very cool. Works great. But, uh, you know, this whole build was just... Uh, well, it's a brilliant build. I mean, I'm teasing you, but it's really quite smart <laughs> and, and quite clever. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a real truck truck. I mean... It absolutely You know, is. living in Los Angeles, we see so many trucks that never get anywhere near off-road. Right. Maybe they take an exit off the freeway. That's yes. about as close. So to see something that's a, that's a real work truck, you can really... It's, take out in the boonies and have fun with it. It's the real deal. And again, we want to deliver something that's not only beautiful, but that is really functional. Yeah, and yeah. this thing, you can take it out. You can get it dirty. You don't have to be afraid. And it's going to go anywhere, and it's going to get you back yeah, home Yeah, and because again. It's, it's, it's not all modern, you don't have electronics where if you get stuck no. out, out in the field somewhere, you don't have a circuit board. You don't even need it, yeah. electricity. If the diesel engine's running, right. You don't even need electricity. Right, right. I mean, it's so simple and so just redundant, and it's yeah. just what you need, nothing you don't, and you know, you've always got get home power, you've always yeah. got get home traction, and uh, well, let's leave home and take it for a ride and see how it goes. That cool. sounds great. Yeah. I'd love to. So, how old is this company? Uh, I started Legacy in 2008. Oh, okay. I had a number. I always worked in cars on the side just for fun. My builds were getting more and more complex, and um, anyhow, I was a restaurant guy. I had three restaurants in Jackson, oh, is that and right, yeah. uh, 
lost my job. You know, I was I was running the restaurants for the owners. I lost my job in 2008. I'm like, this is it. World's ending. What I'm going to do? And I'm like, forget about it. I'm just going to sit in my garage and work on cars. A friend called me up. I said, hey, will you build me a Land Cruiser? And I said, yeah, sure. And yeah. another guy called me up and I got my hands on one of these power wagons and I built the power wagon the way I wanted a power wagon to be yeah, built. Yeah. And um, I put it up for sale and the guy gave me $150,000 for it. Wow. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that again. Yeah. And uh, today we're about a 10,000 square foot facility. Anyhow, I've built uh, 60 of these power wagons wow, now. Wow, 60. Yeah. That's built 60 amazing. of these things. And they wow. go between 150 and $250,000. And I'm I'm booked for 2016. I'm taking orders for 2017. Wow. Well, that's terrific. How many guys in the shop? Uh, we got about 10 guys. I love the absurdity of it. It's just no, so but, fun. but you know, it's really not absurd at all. It's really, yeah. it's really great. I mean, from a truck point of view, you have excellent vision. Right. You know, you've got road clearance. Right. You've got plenty of power. Yeah. I mean, the it, cool factor is off the scale, of course. Yes. But the practical factor is off the scale too. It's not like it's some. Yeah. The, the the customer who owns this vehicle wants to use it to tow a jet boat to the lake. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I, I appreciate a nice muscle car or an exotic or something, but yeah. you're not. You, you can't go out and get your Christmas tree with it. Right. You know what I mean? Like I remember a couple of years ago, Lincoln built something called the Blackwood which is a truck and it had like a mahogany bed, and, but it was like a luxury car. And you, I remember you really, that. You really couldn't put anything in it. I didn't I understand remember that. what it was for. I remember that. And you look down on all the other vehicles. <laughs> hey, there's a Miata down there. Look at that Miata way down there. I love these old truck mirrors. You can actually see out of them. <laughs> yeah. I imagine back in the day you would have had to double clutch, wouldn't That's you? exactly right. Yeah. You would be shifting like crazy. But boy, you got, it accelerates very nicely. Yeah. I mean, it pulls good. <laughs> well, that's all that torque from the I mean, Cummins. fourth gear feels like second gear in anything else. <laughs> so one of the things that you can hear when you're driving this, not only the, the noise of the diesel engine, yeah. the turbo, which is exciting, but you can start to hear all those gear boxes. Yeah. I mean, you have got, I don't know, 10 gallons of gear oil that you're fighting your way through right yeah, now. Yeah, that's probably, that's a heavy, <laughs> that's like steam oil, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need any differential coolers on these. No, no, not really. It, I, you know, again, I don't think it goes fast enough to really get hot, but you were saying earlier, you're, you're turning a lot of stuff. Yeah. To me, that's the measure of when a vehicle is really fun to drive. When you can have fun with it going slow. Yeah. You know, and you go, it's just fun to drive. But that torque, it yeah, is just Yeah, what you do is when you meet a guy who's got a big block Corvette or something, <laughs> you tie a chain on each one and see who can drag the other guy the furthest. That's exactly and, uh, right. That's the kind of race you have with this car. That's exactly who right. Who can drag the other guy the furthest. Yeah. My, my lug nuts have more torque than, yeah, your, yeah. than your muscle car does. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Hogan's Heroes when I think. Exactly. You know, whatever it is. Exactly. That's not the Hogan's Heroes theme song, I know that. <laughs> and driving this is fun for me because like a lot of it's kind of wondering where the vehicle's been. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, this was in the European theater of World War yeah. II. It was probably running troops and supplies. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, you would want a six by six for the nasty kind of terrain. And you know, where was it? How did it end up in Norway? And it is the ultimate recycling. You've taken a vehicle, yeah. you made it useful again. I've it's taken... not sitting in a landfill. It's not, you know, it's one less new truck because that's, you kept something on the road all the time. That's exactly right. I love the choice of color. How many colors did you go through before you decided? We went through, a, we went through uh, about four or five different grays. I, I think that the gray is one of the most elusive colors on an yeah. automobile. Right. I mean, a gray is not a gray is not a gray. Yeah. And um, for me, I don't know if it's just my eyes, but gray either seems to have blue in it or gray has green in it. And we played around with the color at first by adding, taking a kind of an industrial gray right. and adding green to it. And it turned into this kind of wet concrete sort of look, right. which I really enjoyed. But the, working with the customer, he's like, no, I want a little more blue in it. Yeah. And uh, so we ended up with this color, 
which uh, is actually off a current production car. What is it? Off a what? A Jeep Wrangler. Oh, okay. You can get a Jeep Wrangler in a color they call Anvil. And uh, uh, rumor has it that it was known internally as garbage can gray. Yeah. Because it looks an awful lot like a, a garbage can in a shop. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we did the garbage can gray. It turned out beautifully. And again, if you need to match the paint in 20 or 30 years, it's a production car, so it shouldn't yeah. be hard to come up with the code. Why the choice to stick the drum brakes rather than put this on it? Period look or just easier? Or? Uh, it was, it's a lot of monkeying around to get disc brakes. Yeah. Uh, and what we found was, so we want to keep the original axle so we can have the original bolt pattern so right. we can put original style wheel on. Oh, that makes sense. So then I'm machining, right? And I've done this before. I machine the disc brakes on. Fantastic. Now you're making more stopping power than you know what to do with. Well, with the original chassis, it actually can twist your leaf springs. Yeah. I, and right. it can pull your steering wheel and it creates a very, very dangerous situation. Yeah. So it was about working with the customer saying, look, do you want something that's you know, cool as all get out, it goes 55 miles an hour, you know, or do you want a 70 mile an hour truck? And there is a quantum leap between something that goes 55 and something that goes 70 miles an hour. Right. I mean, the physics is on a whole different level. So are you buying up old power wagons or do you wait for a customer to come to you with their power wagon? Um, about a third of my customers bring their own, right. uh, you know, some kind of a family heirloom or something. Um, and I have 30 or 40 of these sitting around in wow. various stages of disrepair. And you just leave them outside. Oh, yeah. You know, the funny thing was, I went to see a guy for some Model T parts. Yeah. And he had it. Oh, I got every part. So I'm, I'm in Massachusetts. I go visit him. He's got like a little shack. And all the stuff is outside in the snow. <laughs> but because Model T's were made with vanadium steel, yeah. which was the best steel you could get, right. they just brush the rust off a little bit of surface, and they're fine. Exactly. There's no need to have everything inside and all that. That's exactly right. I totally, yeah. So we, yeah, we keep everything outside. The pretty yeah. stuff stays inside. Yeah. And uh, the unrestored trucks, I mean, they've been outside for 70 years. Yeah. So. You always replace the motors, they do some stock motor ones too. Once in a while we use a stock motor. They, they have a very cool sound to them, particularly if you tune them a little bit. I'm in fourth gear climbing this hill. Oh yeah. I got any more power on fifth on this hill or am I better? I'm probably better in fourth, aren't I? Probably better in fourth. How much can you tow with it? Uh, I think about 20,000 is, wow. is a good cutoff. Yeah. You're obviously not going to be going very fast. Right, right. But uh, as far as the weight capacity, it's a two and a half ton truck. Yeah. Which is a lot of what you're feeling right now. You're know, going over the bumps and stuff. Yeah, hilarious. That's a two and a half ton truck with tandem axles. The fellow knights of the road with their trucks. I feel yeah. like I'm bonding with this guy. Yeah. I feel well, like I'm in a movie Convoy. Yeah. Yeah, like a C.W. McCall song. Oh yeah, that's stupid. That hilarious yeah. song. We're making beds and we're making running boards and we're making rear fenders. We stamp everything in the U.S. It's all stamped in Detroit. Oh, I wanted everything made in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, and that's just one of the things with our brand that we're really into. Some of these new Bronco bodies and things like that and they're all made in Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, hello, you know, like that's, that's not what we're trying to do here. Let's see how she billy goes. <laughs> I get the feeling this is the thing that it will do very well. Where are we going up here, right? I think we're going to go up that one, if I'm not mistaken. But Stay in first or second? I would just leave it in first. Okay. And just let it let it do its work, you know. It'll, it'll climb that the up RPM up. you're at is totally appropriate, and it, it should just crawl itself right up there. Yeah, everything seems really happy. It's fine. You know, I feel like I'm being towed on a winch. I know, it's crazy, isn't uh, it? It's amazing. Boy, it, just, it really does climb anything. <laughs> it's hilarious. Jeez. <laughs> and you can feel it, it'll think about it for a second, I and know. it's going to send power to a one of the one of the six yeah. wheels and then away you go 
I think this is probably the speed that it was truly designed to operate right. at. Yeah. You know, just hauling troops across God yeah. knows what. We all right? Yep, you're doing great. Here we go. It's a nice line. Now you should be able to see where you're going. Yeah, she just walk herself down the hill. Right? Absolutely. Like gravity do the job. <laughs> it's funny. Did you hear all that? Yeah, just you think it would all bind up, wouldn't you? No. I know people watching the show can't tell this, but we're going down this hill and you're pushing the gas pedal to keep it going down this hill. Right, yeah. I mean, that's how much gear reduction there is in one of these old power wagons. It's absolutely it's insane. Great. I love this thing. Yeah. So yeah, you go out, you go elk hunting or something, you can get to wherever you want to get. Yeah. No questions asked, throw a Christmas tree in the back haul some firewood, go fishing, drive across the river, whatever you need to do, this thing will get you there. Just don't forget to put a gas tank in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can probably go in a second now. Sure. Just roll down this hill. So once you billy goat it up and down a few hills, oh, it becomes yeah. sort of confidence inspiring, and you're yeah. like, hey, I can go anywhere. Well, they knew what they were doing back in 1942. And you realize this truck, with the exception of the drivetrain and the transmission, is basically 1942. It's not doing any, it can't do any more than it did in 1942. That's exactly Except you right. put a little more modern diesel engine in it, but has a little bit more horsepower, but this is not about horsepower. These were designed for serious, nasty jobs. Yeah, serious, nasty jobs. But well, what a lot of fun this thing is. See, you don't have to go fast to have fun. Sometimes going one mile an hour straight down a hill can be as scary as going 200 <laughs> miles an hour. Very cool. Wenzel, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah. What's your website? LegacyClassicTrucks.com. Check it out. You'll like it. We got more hills to climb. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>